uh, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. So today we're going to be talking about how to pay yourself, how to get yourself paid as a business owner. Uh, we we all work really hard, and uh, sometimes we pay everybody else, but we never pay ourselves for years. And that's kind of what we went through. So I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through uh, our experience and how all that changed. We started paying ourselves. So uh, feel free to put any uh, questions you guys have in the comments. I'll try to answer them during the webinar. If I don't get back to you uh, during the webinar, then I'll kind of circle right back to you uh, afterwards. Uh, at the end of the webinar, I will go ahead and um, put a link to a, uh, I'll put a Zoom link in the uh, comments so that we can uh, go ahead and answer any questions that you guys have. So let me see why my face isn't going over here. Okay, looks like it doesn't want to work. There it is. All right, so yeah, make sure you guys put any questions in the comments. I promise I will do my best to get to you guys. Uh, I'm assuming you guys can hear me and see me, so we'll get started. And uh, at the end of this, I'll put a Zoom link in the comments so that uh, we can answer any questions you guys have about marketing or this stuff or anything at all. So what are we gonna be talking about? We're gonna talk, be talking about a strategy on how to pay yourself as a business owner um, so that you can get paid every time everybody else gets paid. Your employees get paid, you get paid. Uh, and most importantly for me, this was to limit the amount of waste that's happening in your business. Uh, a lot of times we just kind of, we don't realize how much money we waste until it's time to do our taxes. And it's like, I spent how much on Amazon? <laughs> I think one time I spent like $50,000 in one year on Amazon buying straps and uh, God knows what else. So that's what we're going to be talking about. I'm hoping that by the end of this, you guys are going to real, feel really great, excited to try this new strategy and get paid this year. Uh, really eye-opening and like a big aha moment, like, man, this is this is what we need to do. So that's what I'm hoping you guys kind of feel by the end of this. Uh, who is for? Small to medium size party rental company owners is kind of who this is going to help most. Obviously, I mean, any industry or any size, this is kind of basic stuff that works for everybody. But that's my experience in party rentals and we're a medium sized company. So that's kind of what we know best. So that's what the, the examples we're talking about, that's what we'll be doing. Uh, it's for anybody who pays, if, if you're somebody that pays everybody else, but you never get paid yourself, you invest all your profits back into your business, buying more stuff, buying more stuff, but you never actually get paid. You don't improve your quality of life. Uh, you constantly find yourself replacing tools and supplies and straps and, uh, and all kinds of stuff in your warehouse. Um, and then at the end of the season, maybe you get whatever's left, maybe you don't. Um, so that's pretty much who it's for. Real quick, for those of you guys who don't know me, uh, I own Bounce My House Party Rentals in Chicago. I also started uh, Event Professional Marketing, digital marketing agency for party rentals. And we also recently launched Event Hawk. So that's what we do. We help pretty much party rental companies with uh, marketing and sales. Sorry for all the background noise. So I've talked to you guys a lot about my um, my experience in marketing and how uh, marketing changed my company so that I, I did started doing it full time and have an agency. But I never kind of talked to you guys about uh, my journey in the rental side. Uh, so I started in, I was working in the hospital and in, uh, in CAT scan x-rays, moved up to manage my department, moved up to teach uh, at a college. And I still do that right now. I was actually recently nominated as professor of the year. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I love teaching. It's that they don't pay me much, but I really enjoy it. To the right here, this is the first my first class to graduate. It's pretty awesome. So I, I really love that side of things. That's why we most of my videos are always teaching like, and I'll call you guys out for questions and stuff because that's what I do. But um, that's when I started our party rental business. We started. I was working overnight, and um, a lot of times I'd, I'd come out of work and, and go deliver stuff. And this was our warehouse. <laughs> We had about eight of these storage units. That was that was our warehouse for a long time. Uh, quality did not kind of go up. I would get out of work, go to one of these storage units. What you can see here there are little tape tape labels that are where things are supposed to go. Clearly, that didn't work. Um, after we got eight or nine of these storage units, we decided we had to, to do things full time, and we got a warehouse. So now we have a warehouse with pallet racking and an office and all that fun stuff. Um, so thanks to, to doing the digital marketing that we do, um, I was able to do much bigger events. We started setting up huge festivals, like very, very big stuff. Uh, we even did our own pay to play festival a couple times, which I don't recommend. Uh, it's good for branding, but you won't make any money. So that's right outside of our warehouse. We set up a big festival and we did it one time free. One time we charged. If you're going to do it, do it free and just charge the vendors. We we got better exposure that way uh, because when we charge very very large company um, this is this was our pre preseason meeting last year 
Uh, these are all of our guys. So these are not our uh, our delivery guys. That this is these are just the ones that came back. We went through about the year prior. We went through about 50 people um, that worked with us almost at one time. So the company grew and grew and grew. And all of our dreams seemed to be coming true. I mean, we were running one of the largest, most successful companies in the area. Very happy. Everything was great. So what's the problem? I mean, what you know, we 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 got really really far. Things were looking great. The problem happened when it came to the end of the year. And we were broke. We literally had like nothing to show for it. We had we, we finished the season with a bunch of debt. Everybody else got paid. We didn't get paid. I was still driving the same car. We were in the same house. We, we were nothing. I mean, nothing in our personal life improved. Everybody else that worked with us, they were very happy. They got, you know, they got paid. Everything improved for them. But we never came out with anything. We still had more debt than anything else. We put whatever else into buying more equipment. And uh, this is what, like three, four years in. And we're like, man, three, four years, we, we haven't come out with anything better. You know, we just keep put, dumping everything back into the company. So, so, so what next? So that's kind of what, what, what made us look for a solution. And we found that the problem was that you spend money from the same account that you deposit money into. I'll repeat that. The problem why we're all suffering and we don't get paid like everybody else, we spend too much money from the same account where we, we deposit our money. So all your money comes into one account, you spend money from that same account. That gives you access to a bottomless pit of money for you to spend out of. And how we realized that was thanks to a book that some of you guys may be aware of called Profit First, right? So this book was recommended quite a bit in the groups. So finally got around to reading the book. Highly recommend you read it. Very good uh, read. Uh, if you don't want to read it, this video pretty much sums up a lot of it. We read the book. We implemented everything that the book said. The book talks about paying yourself first um, before anything else. Um, Unfortunately, it was a little, it was a little too much. So we, we implemented it to a T, but it got to be a little too complicated, a little too overwhelming. So we made some modifications to that uh, process. And that's what I'll be talking to you guys about today. I'll, I'll tell you kind of what the book recommended. Again, amazing book, but also tell you kind of how we modified it to work for our industry, for our company. Um, so basically, the book is based on the envelope budgeting system. So a lot of you guys may, may have done this or may still do this. It's awesome. It's super smart. Our generation doesn't know anything about it. But basically, you take all your money that comes in and you put it in different envelopes so that, you know, by Christmas time, you have something left over or you have, you know, you put a little bit every day into your vacation fund and eventually you have money for a vacation or, or God forbid, emergency. So that's kind of the same system. And it makes total sense. It's nothing that I invented or that this guy invented. It's kind of basic, uh, just basic finance, but none of us do it. We just kind of rely on our accountants to, to do all that for us if we're not doing our own accounting. But uh, the book kind of basically breaks up three different things. So you have the bank accounts that you need. You need to change the way that you do your bank accounts. You can't just have one bank account for everything. You need to change up also the allocation between the bank accounts. That's step two. And then step three, the payout schedule. When you pay yourself, when you pay your guys, when you pay your expenses, period. So let's talk about the bank accounts. The bank accounts. So the book recommended that you have five bank accounts in addition to your personal bank accounts. So that's like six six bank accounts okay we did it we went out and we made five new bank accounts and uh and, and our, our sorry four new bank accounts because we already had our personal and our business so we had four more and the bank guy thought we were nuts our accountant thought, thought we were nuts but we said hey this is what we're going to do we want to take control of our lives we don't care um so that's what we did so we created it and but again it got to be a bit much so we settled on other than our personal bank account you want three other bank accounts so you, right now you have your personal bank account and you have your income bank account, which is the same bank account that you do your expenses out of and that you do your savings. Everything, these three are kind of bundled into one. So you want to break up your business bank account into three different bank accounts. Okay. When you do that, you basically put all your money into your income account and then you split up from that income amount. You, you allocate some for expenses, some for savings, and then some for yourself as a business owner. This is your pay, right? So, so that's basically the gist of it. Um, you, you already have this account right here. This is your personal bank account. And right now you have these three bank accounts into one. So how do you go ahead and start doing this? Well, you got to open up two more bank accounts. And in order to do that right now, all of your income and your expenses are in one bank account. I would recommend the bank account that you have right now, use that as your expense account, because guess what? All of your software comes out of there, your, your expenses, your insurance, your rents, everything already comes out of this bank account. So let's leave that as your expense account and then create your income account. Okay. And from that account, all you have to do is change wherever, whenever people pay for your rentals, whether, you know, whatever pay, uh, payment thing you use, 
just change the deposit account to this new account. Um, this way, all of your expenses still come out from the same account, but now there's not gonna be any money in here. Why does this work? Because now you only give a certain amount of money for expenses. And we'll talk about the allocation in a sec. You only give a certain amount of money for expenses. And if you don't have enough money, right now 100% is available for expenses, okay? If you make $40,000 this month, then you could spend up to $40,000 on expenses and you're left at zero. But if you only put a certain amount in there, let's say 20,000, 20, you can only spend 20, that's your max. You hit a ceiling, so you always feel broke even though you're not, okay? So um, one issue we encountered when we did this was um, uh, monthly fees. So they wanna charge us a fee for every one of these accounts, right? Um, so basically they're charging, I think Chase, we have Chase, $12 an account, okay? So they want $12 as if it goes below $2,000. If your account goes below $2,000, then um, then they're going to charge you a monthly fee. Well, this one should always be below $2,000 pretty much every time because you're always going to empty this one out. This one should never be below $2,000 because this is your savings, but this one, this one may or may not. So these two are the ones that we ended up paying uh, fees on, but what, there are banks that don't have fees, but there's also, you can do, um, they said that if we did a, if we made it a savings account, then we wouldn't pay any fees as long as we did not do more than six withdrawals per month, which is perfect because we don't want to withdraw anyways. So this, this account we made into a savings account, they did not charge us a monthly fee and we were only allowed to move money from this account six times a month. That ended up working out because that's the whole point. We want, to, we want somebody to hold us accountable. So that's what we did. So what are these accounts? Basically your expense account is going to be your, excuse me, this is where your payroll comes out of, your rent, your insurance, your uh, marketing, your software, your website, any supplies that you need, everything comes out of this expense account, okay? Your savings is the fun stuff, right? This is where you buy your new slides, your, uh, your new trucks, your power dolly that you've been saving up for, any new inventory you wanna get into, you wanna get a train, a bowl of, of, of yard cards, that's what, that's what comes out of your savings account, not your expense account, right? If you don't have enough money in your savings account, then you can't buy a new slide because you didn't, you didn't budget properly because you need to pay yourself first. That's kind of the idea. Your personal account is for you. That's where you can start taking vacations. You can remodel your house. We can get that new car. Any, anything nice for yourself that you want to do, you will now have that in your personal account. So this one kind of goes without saying. But what we started doing ever since this worked so well, we did the same thing here in our personal account. So all the money that we get from our business goes into our personal account. But guess what? We don't spend money out of our personal account anymore. We do the same thing here. So now this becomes our income account for our personal and we allocate a certain amount for expenses, a certain amount for, for, for vacation, a certain amount for, for big, you know, big purchases that we want to make. So that's another story, but basically you really should uh, um, set up the same thing for your business and for your personal, just, just to be more, you know, so you can, you don't have to go to your accountant to see how you're doing. You can just look at your bank account and say, I have this much in my savings. It feels great, honestly. I mean, our bank account, we always have one bank account where we feel like, man, I'm broke. I can't, I can't, I can't buy off Amazon now. That's my, I always have packages from Amazon in my, uh, on my, in my front porch. So I can't do that when, when, when I don't have enough, I have to wait till, till the new month. Um, but in my savings account, it's nice and fat. I know I have a nice nest egg in there. So though that's kind of the bank accounts. Does anybody have question on the bank accounts? Anybody have questions on, I'm, I'm looking at the comments. David Eady did mention taxes. Yep. So the book recommends that you have, again, five accounts. So he has income account, expense account. They don't have a savings account. They have a taxes account. Um, and they also recommend you have like a, like a revenue account. And then there's one more. Um, so that's kind of how they recommend it. We just do our taxes from our, our taxes end up coming out of our savings. At the end of the year, we see what our taxes are and they come out of the, the savings. You're, they want you to take like 10% from here and put it into another tax account. If you can be that disciplined, great. Uh, we couldn't be. It got to be a bit much when July and August were just like, screw this. <laughs> so, so that's, that's kind of how, uh, how we end up. So if, if nobody has questions on the accounts, we'll move over to allocation. Allocation. So how does it work? 100% of your money goes into uh, your income account. And then from there, there's a couple different ways, depending on how aggressive you want to be. If you're somebody that wants to grow your company, then you want to prioritize your savings account. If you're somebody that just has a lot of expenses uh, and you're, you're, you know, you're, you're just at a point where you're just kind of uh, <clears throat> burning through money, you need to slowly discipline yourself, you would put most of your money into your expense account. And if you're somebody who just doesn't care, like me, I'm just like, hey, I want to live my life. I'm not going to keep 
throwing money into this company, everybody else get paid. I'm gonna put as much money as I can into here. So this is option A, you'd put 70% of your money right off the bat, One from the 100%, you'd put 70 for expenses, and then you'd share the 30% that's left over between savings and between yourself. So your company gets half and you get half for it to do whatever you want with. Um, option B is just a little bit more into savings. If you just wanna keep growing your inventory, take 30%. I mean, think about it. If you make $200,000, 30% of that is $60,000. You're giving yourself $60,000 to buy new inventory in. That's plenty. That is more than plenty. If you're spending more than $60,000, and the cool thing about this, you don't have to get in debt. You don't have to borrow money to do this. You just pay for it cash and it's yours. You don't have to keep worrying about that. You know exactly what you have. Uh, if something happens, you're, you're, you're safe. So, I mean, I know it's easier said than done. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that if you're in debt, you're bad. Uh, but really getting out of debt is an awesome feeling. And I'm happy, I hope I can help you guys do the same. I and mean, we only got out of debt about a year ago and not even, but it felt really good. And this is what helped us. Um, this is where we're at. We only give ourselves 50% for expenses, okay? 50%, if I have to spend more than 50% on expenses, then then um, then it's, I just don't need to spend. I just don't need to spend. It's just not worth it. Uh, savings, I'm not willing to reinvest into my company more than 20%, okay? Um, if I have to spend, I, I'm just, that's just where we're at. We are in a, at a point where we're actually um, downsizing. We want to have a smaller company. We, we started out getting into bigger events, bigger tents, bigger uh, uh, this and that. Now we, we, after COVID, we just decided that we're just going to stick to backyards, easier to train for a lot of different reasons. Not that that's what you have to do, but we don't want to invest too much back into the company. We kind of 20% we're happy with that. Um, this is going to be for taxes, reinvesting into the company, et cetera. And I take 30% or my wife, she runs the company. Uh, she gets 30%. She, we started doing this last year. We were really miserable. Uh, we summers were not good for our marriage. Uh, we never got paid. So we kind of, at the end of the year, we realized we made like less than minimum wage. So, um, we, I, I always want me personally, I'm, I'm a hustler. Okay. I push and I fight and I work because I know this is my company. Okay. I know that this is my company. I own it. If I don't get paid right now, that's okay. I can wait. Um, it took me a long time to realize that my wife didn't feel that way. She worked just as hard as I did sometimes harder, but she felt that if she didn't get paid, then she wasn't, she didn't see the big picture. And that caused honestly a lot of friction between us because of that. But for, and for a long time, I, I felt that, you know, she was wrong for that. But the minute she started getting paid, things changed. Uh, she, she, she would come to work with a great attitude. She was more than willing to put in more hours to take on more work because she knew that she was getting paid. It doesn't make any sense to me, honestly, because that money is ours anyways, but she didn't see it that way. If she didn't have that money in her bank account now, then she didn't see it as her money. Um, she took that money. She re we've, our house has been under construction for about six months now. I don't even recognize it. She bought all the things she wants to buy. She remodeled the whole house. Uh, we got a new car, <clears throat> things that we've been wanting to do for a very, very long time that we never did. Um, I've never bought a new car in my life. We, I mean, the, the newest car I bought was like six years old. So, uh, and that was really good. So we got to finally do those things because, and it was thanks to her, you know, she was like, I need to get paid and it worked. So, um, that's, that's, it worked out great for us. Our summers are more enjoyable. Um, and the reason we're, we're more than willing to even increase these numbers is because we didn't get paid for a few years now. So now we're kind of back paying ourselves. Um, and we're like, you know what, man, we, we need to make money. If, if these guys who in all honesty got paid and then went on unemployment now, and they don't want to come back to work after COVID, we did it. What did we really get out of this? You know, we didn't get paid. Everybody kind of got a deal out of it except us. So, um, so that's kind of, that's kind of where, where, where we decided to go and everybody's different. Uh, number three is the payout schedule. The payout schedule, the book recommends that you do this, this breakdown. Okay. So you have, let's say you, this month you made $40,000 in rentals. It's June, July, whatever. Um, when do you go ahead and break it up? When do you go ahead and do the math and break it up? Well, the book recommends that you do it on the 5th and the 25th of every month, which makes sense. You know, you wait till a little bit after the month uh, and then you do it just before the month ends and just after the month begins. We did this. We were not able to, we always found ourselves sticking our hand into the jar. We couldn't wait this long between the 5th and the 25th to, to do it. it. It just didn't work. So um, we started doing it every, uh, every week before paid it. So our guys get paid on Friday. On Thursday, we would go ahead and see how much money is in the uh, income account and we'd break it down across all the accounts. Um, that's how we did it. So this way on Thursday, we got paid and on Friday, everybody else got paid. It felt great. When I paid everybody else before, I used to want to cry. 
like, oh my God, my count is going lower and lower and lower. But now I know that I already got paid before anybody else. So uh, it's we're, we're more than happy to, to do that. This account goes gets gets very close to zero all the time, and that's fine. But we know that this account is nice and fat, and we know that this account is nice and fat, and this account is just empty every emptied out every week. It works out great. So that's how we decided to do it. Um, that's probably what'll work for most of you, just kind of being um, being just weekly, weekly doing it. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's that's what we did. It really made it made our work more enjoyable. It really made it so that we 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 felt that we were compensated. Again, even though um, it is our company, um, it's there's something to be said about getting paid and seeing it. It's just psychologically you're getting something so that if you do end up getting something at the end of the year, okay, if you do end up having a big dividend pay for yourself at the end of the year, it's still it's still something, you know, whether it's little or large, you already know that you've been getting paid this whole time. So you guys can do this. Uh, it's I, I know that you guys can, you know, it's it's not hard. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Uh, I'll go through the questions real quick and then I'll post a Zoom link. Um, somebody asked if you should do different banks. The book did recommend you do different banks so that you don't touch the money. Again, um, we we really don't um, we we don't do that. We just put it in one bank. It's really easy to transfer uh, back and forth, um, and uh, and that's that's what works for us. Um, average small business tax is thirty five percent. Payroll twenty five percent, thirty percent. Yeah, I mean you guys do the breakdown. So Steve Steve has a nice breakdown for himself. Um, so you guys, if you guys can do that, then then great. I was not disciplined enough. I'll tell you guys straight up. Uh, we it was hard. It really was, especially in the summer. I would rather you guys pace yourselves at least this year. Do it, get yourselves paid, and then set a new goal. So for us, I'll tell you guys where we're at right now. So this is where we were last year. This year we challenge ourselves. Let's take money out of here and put it into here. So now my goal, I'm gonna try to go for maybe uh, forty-five percent and pay myself thirty-five percent. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep every year. I'm gonna kind of keep increasing it. Do it quarterly if you can, but we have a short season, so um, that's that's what we're doing. Um, so this way, you 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 you're you're constantly paying yourself more. You're a boss. You should be. You should be paying yourself more. You've worked hard on this company. It's, it's about time you got paid for it. And at the end of the day, you only grow your company with what you have. You don't have to keep using other people's money to grow your company and then always feel like you're behind. So I hope this helped, guys. Um, for those of you guys that uh, that that need any kind of marketing help this is where I'll, I'll plug myself in real quick before i put the zoom link um let me put this right here so this is some of the stuff that we help with uh, google we help with google ads to get more traffic to your website event hawk to help get turn that traffic into paying customers uh facebook ads to remarket to that traffic for the ones that don't book and then if you guys need more five star reviews we help with that as well uh, our website is eventhawk360.com eventhawk360.com feel free to visit that i'm going to go ahead and post the meeting link for Zoom in the um, comments and anybody who would like to join who has questions about our experience with this. Again, guys, I'm not an accountant. <laughs> I know somebody's gonna come out and say, hey, this, there's a better way to do it. Um, I, <laughs> this is, that, that's, not, uh, that's not what I'm claiming. This is what worked for us. You guys are gonna find what works for you. I just put the Zoom link in the uh, comments. I'm gonna wait for one of you guys to join because I know sometimes it doesn't let people join for whatever reason. So just let me know when somebody has joined and then I'll go ahead and end this, um, this live here.